Well, good day. It's Monday. Hope no one has the Monday blues. Hopefully they had a good. Hopefully everyone had a good weekend and uh, your Monday morning is going well. I went racing on the weekend. Um, got a little bit of footage of it at the beginning when my phone died and I didn't have my charger with me. So I didn't get that much, but I, I'm going to show a little bit uh, of just walking around the racetrack there. It was dry. I uh, timed in about 12th or 13th out of about 28. Uh, first race, I got out there, I passed a few guys that crashed, and then my cart started running really crappy. Well, inside the gas tank on these carts, you have your fuel line. It's got a little bob weight on the bottom that moves around to get your fuel. Now, I looked at that hose the day before when I was putting my cart together, and I thought, you know what? I better check that hose out. And I look at it, it was quite flexible, and I thought, oh, that's good, you just got to move around, right? Well, it was flexible enough, it was actually a bit rotten. I should have changed it, could have, should have, right? You know, I tell everyone else to check stuff like that out, but then I, I missed it. So, I broke down, had to start at the back of the pack the next race, like 28 carts or something. Uh, the start of it was terrible, these guys in front were going so fast, they wouldn't get lined up properly. Finally, they started the race, we were bunch of us were way back so I just drove around passed a few guys had some fun uh, got to hang out with my friend Jerry and uh, race so yeah it was it was good though okay so you know I just go for the fun now I don't care about winning or, or doing real fast so this morning um, haven't done a saw video for a while you guys all know that I'm working on um, this is Todd Lynch from uh, Newfoundland Spaniards Bay Newfoundland this is a 2165. It's a little bit rough looking, but I'm going to go over some stuff on the John Thread that's a little bit different than the Husqvarna 365. Okay, so let's, 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 this is starting fresh, exactly the way it came out of the box, okay? So, it's got the regular kind of side cover with no uh, outside dog. Let's take that off and just start looking at stuff on this uh, of really uh, what's wrong with it. Okay, he wants me to walkerize it, and apparently he's got another one that he can ship me for parts if we need some some major parts. So let's get our old box here to put our nuts and bolts in, and I got a little list here that I'm going to write down of actually what each part's wrong with it. Um, you know, this the, the motor wise and crankcase is the same as the 365 Husky, but the side cover is a little bit shaped a little dip differently. Uh, their handlebars are shaped a bit differently and their tank is shaped a little bit differently uh, so far let's see here now well, the adjuster pins been kind of worked around looks like someone's trying to modify it to fit in different bars a couple of watches on the bar studs here someone was trying to space it differently or something okay so there's there's the side cover you can see the bottom wear pad here is missing you could always bolt a 385 or 391 on there or the white one and glue it on and still use this cover back guards a little bit war as usual or the chain flies off but this is a nice setup they got here like this yeah so they're a good side cover outside adjuster which is nice okay what do i see right away the crankshaft has been damaged heavily the clip is barely holding on so this crankshaft really would probably work but it's not going to last this clip's going to keep falling off so that's not a good thing so let's see you let's just keep going now get that clip off this clutch here washer sprocket off you see the damage part of it's been broken off maybe someone's been grinding on it or beating on it did someone did something wrong never hit the end of that crankshaft you'll break that area where the uh clip goes on Okay, the drum appears to be in one piece. Husqvarna and Johnson had drums last a long time, but this one actually is pitted. You can see the hard surfacings come off it. It's got all these grooves in it, eh? That needs to be replaced too. Okay, so there's our clutch. It's in good shape. It's the three three spring type, this type of a clutch. are very bulletproof on Huskies and John's Reds. Not like Stills, uh, little, little tiny spring ones that go a lot, eh? Those, those are terrible clutches in a lot of the still models. Decompression is broken, the button's broken off, but it's still in there. At least it's not like the type that have it right in the head, where if it does break, it goes into the motor and it's, and it's wrecked, right? 
Okay, so there's a few things that ain't good right away, buddy. Sorry about that, Todd. But let's get this top cover off. It's a one-piece cover. We're, we're Husqvarna uh, 365s and 372s. The back cover comes off. Then the main cover comes off. It's kind of handy that way. Then you don't have to take three bolts off. Just a couple clips and it comes off, right? So it, it looks in good shape. It's just missing one bolt. And each bolt's a little different on one on there. Air filter's been damaged. This one wants to put glue on it, which is fine. As long as it doesn't have any holes in it, it'll still work. This is more of an extreme filter, or I should say a winter filter, the nylon type one, for snow and, and ice, right? The flock type material furry ones are more of the extremes, extreme ones and stop the fine dust from going into your engine. Oh, another thing I see right away, throttle cable wear. You can see it's coming through the cable right there and it's only getting like half throttle, okay? That's something to look at on all Huskies and John Shreds and, and clone saws, okay? The, the Husqvarna OEM lines, you, they definitely uh, need to be replaced once in a while. The guys in the bush, you know, maybe uh, six months uh, wear on a saw, you, you almost need to change the throttle cable. And that's okay. It's, it's, they're a little bit difficult to do, and I'll do, a, I'll do a, a, a video on a throttle cable replacement because these are a little different. You don't have the cutouts on the side of the tank here, so you got to really actually pull the trigger out of these then feed the new cable in and put the trigger back in. But we'll go over that another time. Okay, so throttle cables. So let's write that down. We have bad crank. Bad clutch drum. Throttle cable. Okay. Top of the case, all three holes for the screws. The top cover, one looks stripped, of course, that was the one that was missing, and uh, yeah, okay. So, let's get the starter off, and then we're going to check it out, and then then we're going to get the motor apart too, because it's going to come apart, it's got it, the crank's no good. You know, John Surratt and Husky, I forget what year they got together, but John Surratt has made some fantastic saws. A couple of my friends here ran 2186s for a long time, which were the John Surratt version of um, of the uh, 385, and they worked great. For some reason, they just seemed to. I like the covers better, and they didn't they didn't vibrate as much as as the 390 when it came out. So the, the 385 and 2186 to me was a better saw than the 390. Okay, all the holes are good for the starter here. Let's check out our spring. Not a lot of bushing play here on these pulleys. That's one thing you want to check on Huskies and John's Red. This pulley shouldn't be too sloppy. This one's good. It could still be used. For the lattice side, check out our switch wire. Looks in one piece here so far. Okay, take off our plug lead. Take off the air conductor. That's what this piece is, the gray piece under the starter. We call it an air conductor because it conducts the air over the cylinder for coolant and the forced air for the um, air injection system, which John Sered called a turbo, but no, they never had a turbo. It was just air injection. It's missing the bushing here for the chain brake for the one starter screw in this corner, which is quite normal. People uh, take them off and they fall off and they, they lose them and they, they don't know where it goes or how, how it goes back in. It's got the unlimited coil, the black one. Uh, which is a part number 544047001. If anyone ever wants one instead of the rev limiter one, switch wire appears to be okay. Coil wire looks okay. Okay, let's get the carburetor off now and the cylinder off and have a look inside this thing. The handlebar, someone's modified. It looks like a pair of uh, Husqvarna ones on here. It's missing part of it for the for the second bolt. So I'll have to see what he's got at home of a other handlebar maybe, or we're just gonna tear this down and see how much this is gonna cost. It could get a little pricey. Case itself looks pretty good shape. The mounts are good on it. And now, okay, someone's riveted the chain brake handle on. No big deal, we'll get that off in a second. Carburetor, three millimeter T-wrench, get that off. 
It's got the good Walboro OEM carburetor on it, which are, to me, these HD ones on 372s were bulletproof. Hardly ever had to change change a carburetor on a 372. Very rare, man, unless it really sits a long time and gets all greened up. But great, great carburetor. They respond good. They, they, they run good. They start good. Yeah, you can't beat them. Any, any wall barrel I really like, actually. I like all wall barrels I like. Except for some of those goofy ones they had years ago. Anyways, okay, so pulse line off, fuel line off. Okay, there's the carburetor off. Typical the mount part uh, for the back is put on one side, no big deal, that can be changed. It's got the OEM uh, air filter adapter on it. Looks in okay shape still. Let's get our muffler off and then the cylinder off and have a look here. A little bit cloudy today. Uh, we're supposed to be an eclipse of the sun today, which is supposed to be quite unique. Unfortunately, I don't think we're going to see it here. Um, the rest of the world, I think, will. That, that has, doesn't have any rain clouds or rain happening right now. Okay. Uh, to the two top bolts and two bottoms you need to take the bracket off on your mufflers just something else that you gotta put back on you don't need to okay let's get the mufflers off now let's have a look in here through the window huh, doesn't look too bad it's got a couple little lines on it but it's not seized or scored okay let's get our uh, jug off try to clean the whole try to clean the heads of the um, screws or just make sure they're not full of gunk and just put your allen wrench in and give it a little tap make sure it's seated in there right nothing worse than stripping one of these you'll have a real hard time getting it out so yeah clean those holes if needed and pound the wrench down okay I normally would take the clutch and the flywheel off first when I'm doing a rebuild. That way your piston ain't flopping around in the rod when you go to impact it off. Okay, there we go. Cylinder off. It's a one ring piston. Basically the same as a 365 and the 26, 2165 here. Bore is in great shape. No scoring, nothing. Gasket was in place. Yep, not bad. Let's check our bottom end out. Oh, someone's done something here. Someone's got some sort of metal kind of piece of rod in there. The heck that is. Never seen that before. Let's see how wore the ring is. If any. Uh, it's got some wear. Not bad though. It'd still work. It'd still run. Okay, there we go. You know, pistons in, in okay shape. Can be cleaned up. Uh, but yeah, this is going to need a crankshaft and, you know, bearings and, and seals in it too. Let's just take the bar plate off though and have a look at the case. Make sure there's no cracks in it. Um, you know, Husqvarna did, did improve these crank cases back in the uh, early 371 saws when we tested a lot of them here on the West Coast and then they beefed them up after the engineers figured out we were running too long of bars on them for uh, the way they built them at the beginning. They only kind of figured we'd be only running up to 24s on it, but we were running 32s. So, yeah, they, they work fine now. Okay, so that's what we're going to need, Todd Litch, from uh, Newfoundland. That's your 20, 2165. So, yeah, I'll give him, a, give him a ring up, talk to him, and uh, see what he wants to do. For now, I'm just going to put it in a box and get on to some uh, other new ones here. I'm going to do a couple 500 eyes today. Uh, 592, uh, 572, and um, yeah, all sorts of other stuff. So, anyways, that's your 2165 John Thread. You know, John Thread actually had the first fuel injected saw back in the 50s, mid 50s. Husk, or John Thread had a fuel injected saw, so still was not the first ones to do it. 
Uh, also, they had a diesel running chainsaw in those days, which I've seen. A uh, saw collector from the, the prairies came here one time. I gave him some old saws, and he had one in his uh, van. I would like to see one run, actually. That'd be really cool. So anyways, there you go. John Surrett, partner. Husqvarna. Um, what else was there? The first company before Husqvarna made some saws over in Sweden. But yeah, unreal how many good saws came out of Sweden and uh, these different companies. But Husqvarna Electrolux Group took them all over. And they took over McCullough, Pioneer, Poodland, Weed Eater. I think they're the biggest small engine uh, company in the world these days. You know, if you add up all the different equipment they make, like construction, uh, construction tools, um, major stuff. So, anyways, there you go, Todd Lynch. I uh, hope everything's going well out there in Newfoundland. Maybe you can see the solar clip out there today. Uh, or a couple icebergs go by. <laughs> anyways, keep your saw on the wood, stick in the ice forever on the road. Have a great day today and have a great week. And thanks everyone for watching. I'm almost uh, hitting uh, 14,000 subscribers now, so thanks everyone for subscribing, and I'll have a lot more coming up real soon. i got a lot of saws to do, and um, the racing saws to get together as well. So have a great day out there. We'll talk to you soon. Bye, you know.